Hi, I'm Lisa Hanfaletti, and I'm making this video for all the people I care about. And I'm hoping that anyone who watches this, uh, please stick with me here. Um, I'm doing this kind of on the spur of the moment. I didn't want to think it, think about it too, too much. So I'm basically here in my pajamas on a Sunday, uh, wanting to read just a very brief little paragraph from a document that I have right here. And this is something that I'm an acupuncturist and as a healthcare practitioner, I, like many other healthcare practitioners, are um, censored in what we can say about um, CBD. So I'm going to explain what this is and why it's important and why I think everybody should know about it. So the document that I'm going to read from is entitled Cannabinoids as Antioxidants and Neuroprotectants. Now I'm going to break this all down so it's going to make sense. And um, I'm going to back up just a little bit here because this is not an area of just spur of the moment interest that I've had. This is something that I've researched for years. And I'm going to tell you just a quick story. Maybe it won't be quick. But the reason I want you to hear this is because something in this video is going to resonate with you. There's going to be a moment when you're going to give it a heart or a thumbs up or something like that. And I want you to tell me in the comments when that moment is. And I also want you to hit the share button because you're going to think of somebody who this video can help. And that's my whole goal here. So tell me when you hit the thumbs up or the heart or the share button. And what is it that resonates with you? Because here's my quick version of a story. Uh, my mother is going to be 88 this month. She has a lot of, she lives with me and I'm her primary caretaker. She has a lot of aches and pains, uh, trouble sleeping, anxiety type things, stress, um, anything that comes along with aging and making it to age 88, you know. Um, and my husband, years ago, five, six years ago, was diagnosed with benign essential tremor. So he had an intermittent tremor in one of his hands. It had progressed, and just a couple of years ago, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And he's doing fine, he's doing great, still works, good attitude, and we are um, doing a lot of different things to, to help him. So don't worry about him, he's doing okay. And my mom's doing okay too. But there's stress, there's uh, question marks, you know, like anybody else, my story's not unique. That's my whole point here is the things that we're dealing with are not unique. There are a lot of families, people who are dealing with different kinds of things. And so this is where cannabis comes into the picture. So this is what I want to read to you. <clears throat> so cannabinoids, let's talk about that for a second, because this scares people, because everyone thinks cannabis is marijuana and marijuana is bad because it gets people high. Cannabinoids are, think of them like hormones. So you know a hormone can be estrogen or progesterone, and a hormone can be insulin or uh, thyroid hormone or growth hormone. So there's all different kinds of hormones, right? And they interact at different places in the body and they have different functions. Cannabinoids are like hormones in a way. There's all different kinds and they bind in different places in the body depending on where the receptors are. So THC is a cannabinoid and it's the one that we know of that gets you high. That's the, the one that we think of with marijuana. Now, CBD is cannabidiol. It's also a cannabinoid, but it doesn't get you high. And it's from the hemp plant. So we've got marijuana, THC gets you high. I'm not talking about that at all when I'm, when I'm reading the, from this document, okay? I'm talking about, or I will differentiate and talk about CBD cannabidiol. And it's one of probably hundreds of cannabinoids that are in the hemp plant and that have been shown to have certain health benefits. Now, I'm very careful what I can say here. So that's why I'm reading something that's already printed and it's not my, I'm not making this up. So cannabinoids, THC, uh, cannabidiol, and CBG, CBN, there's all kinds of cannabinoids in the hemp plant, in marijuana plant. They're, they are the same plant, it's just a differentiation between how much THC is in there. So the hemp plant has less than 0.3% THC. And that's the definition of hemp in the United States. Um, in other countries, it could be less than 1% THC or less than 0.2% THC. So it just depends on where you are. 
So cannabinoids as antioxidants. So let's talk about antioxidants for a second. An antioxidant is something that um, helps prevent damage to cells from free radicals. So these are kind of words that probably you, you're familiar with. So free radical damage of DNA, for instance, can cause premature aging, can cause cells to mutate, and we know what happens with mutated cells. Um, so antioxidants are things like vitamin C, we know that are really good and healthy for the body and prevent cell damage. And then, so cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants. So neuro, nervous system, brain, nerves, protectants means it helps protect them from damage, from, from uh, being assaulted in any kind of way from toxins or other kinds of things. So that's the title of this. It took me this long to get there. Cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants. All right, so now I'm just gonna read you this short paragraph. <clears throat> Cannabinoids have been found to have antioxidant properties. This newfound property makes cannabinoids useful in the treatment and prophylaxis, so that means prevention, of a wide variety of oxidation-associated diseases. Okay, so oxidation-associated diseases. So that's what we just talked about, uh, free radical damage. So, uh, uh, so prevention of a wide variety of oxidation-associated diseases, such as ischemic, Ischemic just means lack of oxygen, or it could also be lack of blood flow because blood carries oxygen. Age-related, no, that is, personally. Inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. Do you know anybody who has age-related, inflammatory, autoimmune diseases? Any of those things, inflammation. Autoimmune, I'm not going to say what they are, but there's a lot of autoimmune diseases. The cannabinoids are found to have particular application as neuroprotectants. So it protects the brain, nervous system. For example, in limiting neurological damage following ischemic, lack of oxygen, insults, such as stroke or trauma, so an injury, or in the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and HIV dementia. Non-psychoactive, meaning no THC, cannabinoids, such as cannabidiol, CBD, are particularly advantageous to use because they avoid toxicity that is encountered with the psychoactive cannabinoids like marijuana, pot, at high doses, useful in the method of prevention. Cannabidiol avoids toxicity, especially at high doses. Safe at high doses. CBD from the hemp plant is safe at high doses. And it has all these properties, neuroprotectants, uh, treatment in neurodegenerative diseases, like Alzheimer's. Do you know anybody with Alzheimer's? Do you know anybody afraid of getting Alzheimer's? Do you know anyone with Parkinson's? Okay, so inflammation, autoimmune, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. I'm just reading you one little paragraph. Let me tell you what this document is, okay? So now you can see why I'm so fired up. Translation angry, but hopeful. This is a patent that I'm reading from. Do you wanna know who this patent is issued to? Can you take a guess? Go ahead and write in the comment section what your guess is. Who has a patent on cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants? I'll tell you who. I'm gonna read it right here. And I'm gonna show you on my screen. The United States of America as represented by the Department of Health and Human Services. So the United States government has a patent on cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants. I mean, and this is a pretty wide range, right? Prevention of 
age-related inflammatory and autoimmune diseases, neuroprotectants, limiting neurological damage following stroke or trauma, like head injury, that kind of stuff, right? That's trauma. And the treatment, the treatment, like I'm not even allowed to use the word treatment when I'm talking about CBD to my patients. I can't use that word. I'm not supposed to. I'm not allowed to. So I'm censored in what I can say, but I'm, I can read this. I can read this. I have read this. I do read this. The treatment of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and HIV dementia. Let me tell you when this patent was issued. Do you have any guesses? Give me a guess. When do you think this patent was issued this year? Because this is, you know, cannabis, you know, it's a big deal, right? It's everywhere, right? Even this is a copy of September issue of uh, AARP. <clears throat> no, it wasn't this year. We think, what do you think, the last five years? No, 10 years ago? 2003. Over 15 years ago. Let me show you this patent. Let me share my screen. United States patent, there's a patent number, October 7th, 2003. What's really fascinating is that a lot of the data, and this is the paragraph that I read to you right through here. What's really fascinating to me about this, and I'll link to this patent in the, in the comment section so you can print it out, you can read it, you can share it. What's fascinating to me is that a lot of the data that this uh, patent, I mean, this is like a 20, 15, 20 page document here. It's just, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, it's based on data from the 80s, the 90s. And so 2003, what this means is uh, the government is putting people in prison for possession of marijuana, possession of hemp. They only let people grow hemp, right? While they're putting people in prison for possession of this stuff that has all these healing properties that are documented and listed here they they have a patent so they are fully aware of the health benefits and yet preventing people and even arresting people for having it so that's why i'm pissed and that's why i feel like everybody should know about this so i'm going to go through everybody that i know as best i can and try to get this out there and i want you to go through and get people out there now, this doesn't solve the problem of where you get CBD because there's a lot of crap out there and that's the other area of research that I've done. And I can't tell you in this video what CBD brand I use because that would also be violating um, compliance and suggesting that then that particular brand, it can treat these things. So we can't do that. And that's, you know, I, I'm gonna follow the regulations. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, but I want everybody to know, if you, um, if you wanna know what I'm doing, um, leave me a comment and we'll, we'll connect somehow and we'll figure this out together. But I'm going to go through everyone I know. So if you know me from Hocus in Delaware, it's where I grew up, let me know in the comments. You know me from St. Mark's High School, go Spartans, let me know in the comments. If you know me from Earlham College, hustling Quakers, not fighting Quakers, okay, fix that, hustling Quakers. Give me a comment, let me know, class of 85, right? Boston University, got a lot of friends there. Say hi to me, uh, let me know if this resonates with you, if there's something important in here that um, you'd like to know about. This is kind of the research I would have really liked to have done. Um, Vancouver, oh no, wait, Michigan, don't forget Michigan. We lived in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Pete was at um, in Ann Arbor there. So anybody from there, let me know. And then we came to Vancouver, Washington, Barnes and Noble in the Couve, yeah, OHSU, yeah, and Oregon College of Oriental Medicine, yes, got a lot of colleagues there, hi to everybody. Make sure you get a copy of this, and what I do in the treatment room is I read this to people, and I let them make the decision if they want to pursue researching CBD, and I tell them, you know, you have to do your research. There's a lot of crap out there. Um, I came up with nine specific tips that I give people in um, what to look for in finding good quality CBD. So this is the non-psychoactive hemp plant version of um, one of the cannabinoids. Um, and I'm going to do that in another video. So I'll post that in another video so I'm not cross, 
you know, promoting anything here. So if you want information about the nine um, criteria that I use in selecting a good company and a good uh, brand and quality of CBD, let me know in the comments. If um, you have questions for me about anything, you know, it's probably better to private message me. So if you send a friend request through Facebook or you email me or whatever, um, just let me know what it's regarding and I'll do my best to, to figure this out, uh, to, to answer your questions. But here's the thing that I'm realizing is that we have to help each other. Okay. This, this kind of information, the fact that it can get buried, you know, don't you think 15 years ago, it would have been nice to know that this is a protection against Parkinson's, you know, six, seven years ago when Pete was diagnosed with the benign essential tremor. Do you think I would have wanted to know about the protective effects of hemp, you know, that's non-toxic and safe? even at high doses. Um, would we have used it? Would he have used it? I don't know. But that's the thing is I'll never know. We'll never know. And that bugs, bugs me. So we have to help each other out. That's how I feel about this. And that's why I'm putting this video out. And I don't know how long it'll last, but I'm just going to start. I got to start somewhere and let me know, you know, what you think. Um, and let's do this together. I am also putting together a team of healthcare providers to help us all so that we can follow the changing regulations. You know, the FDA has got their hand in this and, and it's interesting because they just awarded a, a, a pharmaceutical company um, the patent on a particular drug. And the only active ingredient in that particular drug is cannabidiol, CBD. So now the question becomes, is CBD a drug? Is it a food supplement? Is it an herb? And it's, you know, it's hemp, it's from hemp. <laughs> so I feel like we're gonna get squeezed here. And if we don't stand up, if we don't start talking about this, if we don't start sharing this stuff, it's gonna turn into something that's not easily uh, acquired. So if you're a healthcare practitioner and you want to join my team right now, I have about eight people. We're all working together. Uh, it's more than that, but um, there are acupuncturists, there are naturopaths or other type of wellness providers and supporters. You know, just let me know if you're interested in, in kind of sticking together and learning what we can and cannot say so that we follow the rules. We aren't breaking any regulations and we avoid any problems with our licensing boards or with the FDA or whatever. Okay. All right, you guys, thanks so much. Have a great day and uh, let's do this together. Thanks.